Um, the, this next presentation is called Pure Data Plus HTML5, a more powerful web audio. So, number one of them is Martin Roth. He is the CTO of Reality Jockey. They're over there with the green T-shirt. That's Sebastian Pigmol, and the lovely guy on the couch. That's Yuli Lefter from Reactify. I think the stage is theirs, and they will give, introduce them better than me. Thank you very much, Jana. Uh, so, hello. As she said, my name is Martin Roth. Thank you all very much for coming. I appreciate it very much. I hope over the course of the talk, we end up filling up more of the spaces here, because you all are going to see and hear, mostly hear, some really phenomenal stuff today and you're going to learn a lot and you go home and you're going to read all about it and you're going to do some really creative things that will make the whole world say wow that's some cool shit that's a promise so here's the deal my name is martin that's me i work at rjdj in london uh, i'll talk a little bit about rjdj a little bit later on but mainly we make iphone apps that take the sounds and the world around you and we turn it into music Next, we have Yuli Leftoff from Reactify, also based in London. He doesn't say much, so he's, uh, he's the bouncer in our entourage today. And here we have Sebastian Picamal, and he is from Futuris in Helsinki, joining us, but he's French. All right, so what are we here talking about today? Uh, well, mainly we're here talking about audio in HTML5. So a lot of you have heard about web audio, the web audio API, of course. Um, but a lot of the really amazing innovations that have been happening in the HTML5 space has all been in visualization. Everything having to do with making your eyes vibrate and, and sort of go into a seizure. So we've seen a lot of really cool stuff happen with Canvas. Canvas tag, everyone knows about it. You can do really exciting stuff, draw arbitrary things to the screen with JavaScript. Super stuff. Next. Also seen a lot of great stuff happening with SVG. Again, you can just define shapes, uh, resolution independent shapes, and you can, you can zoom in, zoom out, animate them as you wish. Uh, also extremely helpful when you're building up some kind of a, a visual interface. Perhaps the most interesting and exciting new innovation, though, has been with WebGL, being able to use 3D accelerated graphics, 3D graphics in general, inside of the web browser a la OpenGL. Uh, this is Mr. Dube's website, whom uh, you may be familiar with. Uh, but Here's just one example of some just cool graphic stuff that you can do. But what happens with audio? We've seen all these visual things. What about the audio stuff? I feel like we've been missing a little bit out. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm a music guy. I like listening to music. I like hearing strange sounds. Uh, I would much rather be blind than deaf. So I, I've been missing a little bit of the audio. Now, we, for a long time, we've been able to listen to MP3s or whatever and stream that over the web, and that's been nice. But I'm interested in really like reactive sound that reacts to me or sound that I can interact with and whatnot. Next. And now, with the Web Audio API, which has come out in HTML5 recently, and this is a standard which is uh, still evolving, we finally have the ability to manipulate audio from a relatively low level, all within JavaScript, which has been a lot of fun. Now, I think the most uh, the most popular demo or the most popular application of web audio so far has been the Moog Google Doodle. Now, first of all, how many, how many of you saw this when it first came out? Excellent. That's, I guess, why you're here in the talk in the first place. So many of you also know who Robert Moog is. Who knows Robert Moog? Yeah, he's one of the first popularizers, I suppose, of electronic instruments, electronic synthesizers, and the like. That's what one of them looked like. Um, can you play it again a little bit more? It had all these knobs and switches. It had oscillators uh, with different waveforms. And you can combine them together, put filters on them. It's a whole lot of fun. You can lose years of your life playing around with such a synthesizer. Cool. So we, well, OK. Let's, so how does that something like that work? Now, we have, uh, we have a bouncing ball here. We'll see this bouncing ball several times throughout the, the, uh, the presentation. But what does that actually look like? All right, I guess the source code is probably a little bit small. But if you're familiar with programming and you're familiar with audio, then you can easily imagine, oh, I'm going to create an oscillator object. I'm going to create maybe some kind of a gain object so I can adjust the volume of my, of my tone. And then I can somehow add these animations to the gain object so that things can become louder and become quieter over time. Uh, maybe I can connect my oscillator to the gain, and then the gain goes to some kind of an output node. 
Uh, it's relatively straightforward if you know how to program, if you know about how audio synthesis is done. Good stuff. Now, this is all well and good. And now, we, I want to start really start the presentation proper by doing a demo, which has hopefully some fun audio in it. Now, if you tweet right now, and you tweet to this hashtag, CP Audio, actually, Yuli, why don't you explain this? Because you made it. So, I do have a voice. Um, so this is a Twitter demo that we've put together using Cynical, which is um, a piece of software that we're going to talk about in a moment. Um, but what this demo does is it listens out for any tweets going out on this hashtag, CP Audio. So if everyone could get out their phones, smartphones, mobiles, laptops, whatever, and tweet something with this hashtag right now, what we should hear is this Twitter soundbed kind of rise and we'll get more activity on the tweets. Uh, we'll get more activity in the audio. And every time a new tweet comes in, we're actually going to get a new little piece of sound in the sound bed. Um, what we're also doing with the demo is analyzing the sentiment of each tweet. So we try to identify if it's positive, neutral, or a negative sounding tweet. And then based on that information, we'll actually change the chords that the sound bed plays. Um, so if it's a negative sounding tweet, we'll get a minor key. If it's a positive sounding tweet, we'll get a, positive, uh, a major key. And then a neutral key in between, like an augmented chord. Um, so throughout the course of the presentation, if the sound bed can be heard over us talking and the rest of the stuff going on, um, then you'll hear this constantly evolving sound bed. We're also going to put this demo up online um, for you to all check out afterwards. Um, but it's just a great example of um, kind of live audio in the browser that can be done with Cynical, which is something that we're going to talk about in a moment. Thank you, Yuli. I don't hear it so well up here on stage, but let's see what happens. So that is just a, a demonstration of the kinds of things when you can do more powerful audio processing in the browser. Now, Yuli, myself, Sebastian, we're all involved in the Pure Data community. Now, Pure Data, we've mentioned this, it's an audio programming language, which kind of sounds crazy if you're just maybe used to normal programming languages like JavaScript or Python or C or whatever. But this is really a programming language specifically made for audio. Uh, and furthermore, it is, in fact, a graphical audio programming language. Next slide. And this is what it looks like. It's pretty clear what's going on here, I hope. We have an oscillator, uh, a for with a, a frequency of 440 hertz, and it's going to your digital to audio converter, namely going to the output. Uh, this is a super simple patch. This is basically the hello world of pure data. There's nothing to write. There's just something to see. Uh, and it's quite clear how the signal flows from one object to the next object. Now, of course, you can build up as much, uh, these programs can become as complex as you want them to. And here's uh, something much, much more complicated uh, from an app that we did recently at RJDJ for the Dark Knight movie. Uh, here, what you can see, you see a lot of, of these signals going around, like the audio is going around. You can see a lot of messages being passed around, so you can do logic with your audio and then control how your audio changes over time. You're really making a musical program more than anything else. Uh, you're creating not just your piece of music or your, your sound, it's just no longer something that you end up rendering to a WAV file or to an MP3 and then you pass it along to your friends. But it really becomes a program that runs over time and that it has the opportunity to change every time that you listen to it, if you want to, to make really a, like a, a musical, a source of music rather than just something like some, as if it was music frozen in time. It's like a real instrument. Let's go on. Now, a lot of apps have used these, this pure data programming language in, in the past, over the last two years or so. Uh, Fract OSC, that is a, a game that on the desktop that's coming out relatively soon. Uh, Pugs Love Beats, that was an iOS game. Spore, uh, which came out uh, several years ago now, but that was, a, that was a very big hit with EA. RJDJ, from uh, the company that I'm from. Uh, Peter Brinkman has made a really fantastic book called Making Musical Apps, and that's all about using Lib uh, using pure data or this audio programming language to make apps on the desktop, on the mobile device, etc. And he explains how all of that works. 
Now, how many people here know Bjork? All right. Did you know that she released an iPhone app or an iOS app maybe about a year ago named Biophilia? Cool. So it didn't use PD, but it could have used PD. And we just put it up here because that particular app was something where for every song and the album that she released, there was an interactive musical experience to go along with it. And it's the kind of thing that PD is used with quite a bit. So if you're familiar with that app, that's the kind of thing that PD can do, it wasn't used in this particular case. So now we're going to play a short video for you, which comes from RJ DJ uh, with the Inception app, uh, where we take all the movie, all the music from the movie Inception, and we turn it into this ever-changing soundtrack to your life. So as you're going through your life, it detects what you're doing with your with your surroundings, with your life, and it plays for you the right part of the Inception soundtrack. So it sounds like you're inside of that dream world. Now this is just a short trailer, it's about a minute long, but I always like it because it really instills this sense of awe and wonder, at least for me. That's not working. Let's just move on to the next slide. All right, sorry about that. I know, I know, Michael Breidenbrücke, we have Hans Zimmer up there talking about the, what an amazing experience it is when you go outside and you start moving and then suddenly you have the action music to the film. And then you sort of go inside, you sit back down and then the, this still calm music comes over you. It moves on from the action music, comes down into much more of a, a thought-provoking still music. And then perhaps if it's suddenly nighttime, you get maybe a nightmarish music that comes out. Who knows, depending on whatever it is that you happen to be doing at the time. And that music will also change every time that you're listening to it. Maybe it listens for some sounds in the, uh, in the environment and it will trigger certain parts of the music depending on those sounds in the environment. The sky is the limit in terms of creativity. So now I, so I'd like to go back to this point about why are we talking about using PD in the web as opposed to this web audio API, which is already out there. And it's an evolving standard, but why use PD? So as we saw with the code example before, with web API, you need to be a programmer. It's all in JavaScript, and you have to have a relatively good idea of how to string things together. And you also have to, good idea, have to have a relatively good idea of how audio synthesis is done. Now with PD, you don't need to be a developer. Everything is on your screen. It's graphical. It's a box, and you're stringing boxes together with lines. You do have to think a little bit like a programmer because you have to think about, well, what happens uh, when, a, when I want a certain piece of music triggered? How do I want that piece of music triggered and what happens to all of the other parts of the music and so forth? But these things are usually relatively straightforward to do because all you have to do is connect boxes and lines. Secondly, of course, well, or thirdly, there is very much a vibrant pure data community out there. Just like with many other programming languages, there are, you can get libraries that will do certain things. Like if you want a, like a certain kind of delay effect, or you want a certain reverb effect, or you want a certain kind of synthesizer, you can get that out there. It's there. You just, you just download it, and uh, it's all text files anyway, and it's really easy to include in your project. And naturally, you don't want to reinvent the wheel in terms of all of this amazing audio processing that you could be doing. So we go, come back here to the overview, and we've reviewed now pure data and a little bit about what it is, how it works, uh, what it looks like. And now we're going to move on to the WebPD and the Cynical sections. Now, WebPD and Cynical, they're both libraries that will interpret and run pure data patches, or the pure data programs. WebPD is a JavaScript-only one, and Cynical is something that runs in Chrome's native client. So it's a native library that executes all of these commands natively. I'm going to pass it over now to Sebastian, and he'll tell you about WebPD because he was the one who wrote it. Hi. So about WebPD, so it's it's a pure JavaScript library, so it's written completely in JavaScript, and uh, under the hood, it uses uh, uh, the audio APIs like the Web Audio API that was made with Chrome, and also when you use Firefox, it uses the uh, bit older audio data API because. Things are never simple, so now there is no standard widely accepted. So you have to kind of accommodate all the all the specifications that all the browser browser vendors have made. So 
WebPD is trying to address this problem by using uh, a library called sync.js uh, that you can check if you want to do cross-browser synthesis. It's, it's really well made and it works really well. It's quite, uh, it's quite performant, actually. Uh, and uh, WebPD, uh, as opposed to PD, PD is actually only you load a patch and then you, you can interact in the graphical user interface, send messages and stuff like that. But there isn't uh, this thing that in the PD community we call uh, dynamic patching, which is that it's, it's very complicated to uh, actually um, uh, change, modify your, pack, your patch dynamically and add new objects and trigger comments and events uh, by using other languages or stuff like that. Uh, while uh, WebPD, it's taking profit of JavaScript. And JavaScript is a really dynamic language, so it would be a pity not to have a complete API to, to uh, modify your graph yourself. Uh, so that's what it's doing also. So it doesn't only run the patches, it also provides you with a full-blown API to modify your patch dynamically and to trigger all the messages that you want uh, in your web page. So here, uh, again, the, the sound check. Uh, that we've made before with the Web Audio API is just to, to give you a comparison on uh, how you would do it with a Web Audio API and how you would do it with WebPD to show that it's a bit simpler actually. Uh, so here, this, this is the patch that, that we use and um, like Martin said before, what is good with PD is that you don't need to actually code anything. You can just make a patch with a graphical user interface and then this patch is just a file and then this file, that's the one we have for the sound check with the ball bouncing. This patch, you can just load in in your page. So here we see, oh well, yeah, it's really small, so it's hard to see. Uh, but by the way, the, the presentation will give you a URL where you can check it online after if you want to see the code examples and this kind of stuff. Uh, but so basically, uh, you you don't need to you don't need to code anything. This, this piece of code, you could just take it and you could just paste it to your page and just replace the, the URL of the patch with any other patch that you have made and it would run exactly the same. And then you could uh, hook up whatever uh, graphics you, you want to hook up in, in your, uh, on your page, for example, this bouncing ball and call any, any message, do anything with this uh, dynamic patching API, so the, the API uh, implemented by WebPD. So just, just to show a bit about this, this dynamic patching API, I've also posted an example that shows how to create the same patch completely from scratch by, by calling, uh, by building all the objects and then making the connection yourself completely in JavaScript. So that's, that's just a, another option. But of course, for doing that, there is the same problem in Web Audio API as you have to be a developer to do it. So uh, yeah, but that's just a, another option that you, it's, interesting to know that you have it as well. Uh, so here uh, is an example uh, that I just made with WebPD. Uh, so Martin, maybe you can play with it. So basically, this is exactly what uh, the PD GUI looks like. You create objects, you can connect them, and then you can make sound and you can, you can have fun like this with it. And then you can just save, save this patch and it will just create a file and, uh, and that's what you need to load. Can I, does it connect? Well, yeah. yeah. It's a bit broken at the moment, but it was working just before. Good excuse, nice. Uh, so you can go next. Uh, so the roadmap of WebPD is it's, it's really actually, as, as you can hear, I guess cynical is a bit the same. Those are really, really alpha libraries. So it's really experimental stuff. It's going to work soon, but at the moment there is a few glitches. But it's, it's really promising, I think. Those are really promising projects. So the roadmap in, in WebPD, for those who know uh, pure data, is first to, to implement uh, abstractions. Uh, which basically allow you to, to have much simpler patches because when you have really complicated patch like the one we saw before, you can also just took pieces of this patch and make, uh, put them in another patch and then just 
load this patch in your bigger patch, which basically when you know software engineering is a really common practice to kind of encapsulate your code and load it like that. Uh, then also uh, what I was thinking, something really interesting that I was thinking is that one problem of WebPD at the moment is that as it's doing the whole synthesis in JavaScript, it's not necessarily very, very performant. But uh, by using the native code, uh, like the WebAudio API, which soon hopefully will be better and more widely accepted, uh, it could be possible to use directly the nodes of the WebAudio API to do the synthesis instead of calculating completely with JavaScript. That's also a possibility and that I will look into it uh, next. And uh, yeah, and also a website and make a proper release and that I will make it very, very soon. So if you're interested, there is also the URL in the presentation, you can go there. Or you can just Google it, you will find it. Now we'll give the mic back to Martin, which will tell you about Cynical a little bit. Thank you very much, Sebastian. So now we come to Cynical. And Cynical is basically the same thing as WebPD, except it doesn't really do anything in JavaScript. It does all of this audio processing uh, on your machine in native code. But how is this possible in the web, you ask? Why, of course. It uses the native client plugin system or framework that is available in Chrome. Uh, currently, the uh, native client has been used a lot by people to make games, like, for instance, in the, in the Google Play Store, things like that. Uh, but we're going to do just some hardcore audio processing, get down to the middle, go down to buffers, use the SSE instructions, and just do some great floating point math. Um, yeah, it, uh, it's a, a cynical, it, the reason that it's called cynical is because it wraps around a, a pure data runtime called Zen Garden, because that's a Chinese restaurant that I used to eat at. So we, that's how the name came about. And then there is native clients, so Z-G-N-A-C-L. If you get hit on the head once, it becomes cynical. So, and, and cynical is also a library that you could potentially use on any kind of a mobile device, on the desktop, anywhere. And now I'm just repurposing it and putting it into the web. Next slide, so now we come back to the sound check. What do we hear? It's a bouncing ball. Exactly like all the other bouncing balls, because all of these libraries interpret the same, the same patch in the same way, which is good. That is what you want. Here's a bit of source code. Again, I realize it's very small, and I apologize. Point is, it doesn't take a whole lot of source code to just slap this into your web page. And then, as Sebastian was saying, you just load the PD patch into it, and it's good to go. And you can interact, then, you can interact with it through JavaScript. There is a, uh, sort of a thin JavaScript API around the whole thing and it gets the job done. All right, now here is possibly the most absolute fun part of this presentation. It's time for some cool demos. What can you do with Cynical? Now, these are, this is a demo that uh, Yuli has put together. Are we having sound? No, there's no sound. Can you get it to work at all? Well, let's see some on-the-fly debugging here. What you would see. So here we have got George Clinton. How many know, people know George Clinton? Good. So we've got George Clinton. And usually, what does everyone want to do with George Clinton? The only thing that anyone ever wants to do with George Clinton is to kind of jam along with the whole, th with the whole show, right? So uh, on the side there, that, that gray bar on the right, that's a little sort of synthesizer pad. And as you, as you rush your mouse over it, as you click your mouse all over it, it will play notes that always fit perfectly with whatever George Clinton is playing. You just can't possibly sound bad. So not only will you be funky, but you'll also be good. Let's see if we can get it to work again. No, we can't be funky today. Feel free to come and see us afterwards, and we'll show you how it's done. Let's go to the next demo. Oh, is it? Wait, is the sound good? No, it was not good. Ah. Sorry? Oh, it was. It was working. Oh, really? Are we going to see anything? Yeah, whatever. All right. Well, uh, yeah, like, you're a crazy man. Well, what else? 
Now, usually, the first thing that anyone wants to do with these kinds of uh, these kinds of audio frameworks or audio systems is like, oh, I'm going to make a synthesizer. That's what Google did. They made the Moog synthesizer, and here we did too. We didn't make a Moog. We made a Roland Juno. Arguably a better synthesizer, but that's a long discussion. So here again, we've got our Juno all lined up. We have a bunch of presets. We have a bunch of parameters that we can add. Can you play it a little bit? Loading. Sorry? Loading. Oh, it's loading. <laughs> One downside of native client is that oftentimes the, the native executables are very large that it needs to download. Now, this issue is being addressed with, with current and future versions of native client, but sometimes it still takes a while, uh, as in the files are many megabytes. Just keep talking. So here in this uh, particular example, again, we have all these presets. We have all these sliders where we can, so we can change the characteristics of the sounds. And this is all, all these sliders, all the UI elements. That's all done in JavaScript. And it's just that every time you move it, it sends a message down into pure data. And, uh, and it updates whatever audio uh, elements that it needs to. And it gives, just gives you the sound back. This is the most horrible. Demonstration ever. Yes, we have inlets in pure data. How are they defined? Let's talk about that in the QA part. But we can handle it, no problem. Well, Martin, just say that they can check it out online. You, you could check all this stuff out online, and I promise you it will work. We have uh, some Murphy's Law today. OK, so what can you do right now in Cynical? You can send messages back and forth between JavaScript and Cynical and PD and all of that stuff. It works. So you can do it's easy for debugging. You can even do processing of data in pure data and then send it back out into, into JavaScript so that you can do things like animations or visualizations with it. Uh, you can load the abstractions. And in the, the world of pure data, abstractions are just simply, you can imagine, like uh, extra classes or libraries that you can load. Like you just found a really cool reverb online and you want to use it, that's an abstraction. Loading audio assets. Usually people really want to be able to sort of chop up drum samples or create granular synthesizers and whatnot. Of course, you want to be able to load some pre-existing audio assets. You can do that here. That's on the roadmap. Unfortunately, there's no microphone input. Microphone input is always extremely popular because you can, you can, talk, into your, you can talk into your web browser, talk into your phone, talk into your device or whatever, and you can do cool effects on your voice, like a Darth Vader voice, or make you sound like a chipmunk. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, this kind of microphone input is not available in the web browser due to security concerns, and so we can't get a hold of that here either. Maybe this will change in the future, and when it does, we'll be there. So now we've uh, reached the conclusion of our presentation. And the goal here has been to introduce you, I guess many of you, to this thing called pure data. This strange thing, which is a pure data graphical audio programming language. And then to show, hopefully, uh, maybe as if the demos had worked a little bit better, that you can do extraordinarily powerful and complex things. You can make arbitrarily crazy synthesizers, effects. You can do all sorts of logic with your audio. And the entire and pure data itself is made for doing logic with audio and creating these kind of musical programs that will interact with you, that will react to you, that will generate new music on the fly. The language itself is made for that, and that's what we use it for. And we are really hoping here to get people interested in doing things like that on the web for everyone to see and everyone to interact with. And that means games, that means installations, that means just crazy experimental stuff that we love so much. So now I'd like to turn it over to any of you who have questions and to see if maybe we can get you a little bit more interested. Yes? If you use the microphone. Check, check. Is that on? It's on. So uh, you mentioned about uh, no microphone input. So maybe you can elaborate a bit on what kind of user input can we get uh, into making uh, audio interactions? What kind of visual input? Uh, user input. What kind of user input? Yeah. In general or in the web? Uh, in the web. Uh, well, anything that you want, really. Uh, I mean, obviously, there are things like mouse. Anything to do with the mouse, right? Uh, anything to do, 
I, I guess a lot of people on the web, they like to work with data. So you, I think it's very well suited for things like data visualization, or so that you can hear the data instead of just seeing it. Um, yeah. Well, uh, like, like, uh, like we did with this Twitter experiment, also a cool thing with the web is that it's connected. So one user, uh, user events that you can use is, for example, something coming from a website. So for example, here we were using tweets coming uh, in real time just to modify the sound that was played. So that's also a really good example, actually much more interesting than what you have seen before because that's what, ma what makes the web so special in, in this sense also. Thank you. Yeah. Did we have a question over there? Um, uh, well, I, I know how PD works and uh, well, my question is, how, are, how is this, uh, well, the way I know PD, you have to have um, a very fast, um, a very, it's, it's better if you have a small latency. So you use, you use Jack or something else to get, a, to get that. And how do you do that? Or how are the results using a, a web since you don't have to start, uh, you don't start the... Uh, so I can tell Jack. you in, in Cynical with the native client, uh, the native client has its own audio interface or audio framework that you can plug into. Basically, you tell it what audio rate, what sample rate do you want, what is the, the block size that you want, and then it just gives you a callback function. So typically right now, we ask for, a block, we ask for an audio sample rate of 44 kilohertz, sort of standard CD rate, and a block size of 512, which is about, uh, about 11 milliseconds of latency. It can go lower, it can go higher, but that is something that has worked well for us and has been relatively low with latency. Any more questions? Yeah, there's another one. Yes, I, I have another question. Uh, so um, that with the audio input, you, uh, is it possible to have an audio input or not? That is what I didn't know. Because so you said you, you cannot use a microphone. Yeah. But you can use uh, somehow of input? As to the best of my knowledge at the moment, there's no, it's not possible to do audio input okay. unless you, you download some kind of a, a WAV file, or some kind of an audio file into the system. Uh. And I, I have seen very recently a demo with a webcam directly in the browser, so I'm pretty sure that very soon microphone input will be there also. Uh, yeah, yeah. Why not? Why not? But for instance, you could easily imagine uh, taking some kind of a soundscape off of SoundCloud, downloading that in and putting it into PD and then doing some chop it up like crazy or do whatever you need with, with it, yeah. making but installations, whatnot. Yeah, but at the moment, it is not possible to do it in real time. I mean, uh, if you use the, uh, your audio input and uh, the buffers that you are, uh, to fill the buffers with your audio from your audio input microphone or line in, and well, then uh, right now there is no audio microphone uh, input possible at all. Okay, but yeah. if there were, uh, you could just pipe it directly in. I think there there would be. I mean, you would of course still have your normal latency, but it would be. It's there's nothing out of the ordinary going on there. Anyone else? Don't be shy. Come on, we have time. Are there anyone? Are there any people here actually interested in doing things like audio installations, or interested in game audio, for instance, or what other, or, or interested in audio interactions, like human human audio interactions, things like that? And are you interested? Are you have you ever wanted to be able to do these things on the web? Are you are you doing it mainly either in games or in actual in physical installations? Can we have a microphone over here, please. Personally, I was waiting for that. Yeah, so, talk to us. Yeah. I mean, so I, I'm much more of a technology guy, uh, but these two guys here, they're, I guess especially Yuli, he does the most and he's helped me a lot in terms of just making sure that this stuff actually works properly and then also creating demos for it. He's the one who created the Funkadelic yeah, I, and also the Juno one. So cool. he knows, he's very good at thinking about how to apply these technologies creatively. So come and talk to us, and, sure, and we'll support sure. you in any way that we can. Sure. Can we find the presentation somewhere? Is there a URL or something? Absolutely. Can you? 
if you have some URLs where we can uh, download the libraries? Yes, all of the URLs are in the presentation, but perhaps we could find a way to give the URL of uh, the presentation. I, I'll just tweet the, the URL of the presentation, maybe both to CP Audio and also to just the campus party. Okay. Or just talk to us. Yeah. One more question? So, I surf on internet for searching WebPD mm, software, but there is no current release or experiment release. How is it possible? I don't find the, the installer of WebPD on internet, on Google, on a pure data info website. They say current release, no stable release, and experimental release, nothing. How is it possible? I cannot you, download it. You, you mean on pure data info? You didn't find it? It's not there. It's, 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 uh, it, there's just a GitHub repository at the moment. Ah, okay. okay. So you can look for a GitHub okay, WebPD okay, okay. and you will find it. Okay. okay. Uh, though there's a, a small trick is that I'm not yet the maintainer because I was not origin at the project of the project. So you just follow the links, read what's written and you will find the repository. But that's going to be settled very soon. So. Okay, thank you. But, but all of the, the, the real links are in this presentation. I think it's also, I guess it's important to know that we're just, I suppose you could say we're not officially affiliated with the, the real pure data project. These are just things that we've started doing on our own because, it, I mean, as usual, we needed it for our own purposes and what was out there wasn't fitting. But it's out there and it works. And it's being developed and it has bugs. Like all good projects. Sorry, what specifically is the RJDJ? What is RJDJ? Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I ch checked that book out, the Making Musical Apps, and ac the RJDJ part was the part I didn't actually get, and I just skipped it and went to the, the rest of it. <laughs> yeah, I skip that RJDJ stuff all the time, too. Uh, I'm going to give you a demo, because Yuli has been hassling me about it all week, of what is RJDJ. You're going to love could it. Could you make, uh, give us a, just a simple one, two sentence definition right now? Or like summary, or like, I don't know. The demo I'm going to give you the demo. Okay. okay. So there's this thing called moves. One, one of the apps or features that, one of the things that RJDJ has done with PD is this thing called moves. And I'm going to give you a demonstration right now. And then we can talk about other things that you can do. So everything that RJDJ does, it all uses pure data. Pure data is the audio engine that we do. We are crazy pure data programmers and musicians, if you will. And usually if we can think it, we can make it. What, what kind of music do you prefer? Hip hop, R&B, old school hip hop, or funk? Funk. Old school hip hop. Yeah, dog. <laughs> well, am I no is that now? is that Funky Manchu? That's Funky Manchu. All right. Audio. You can't really see what's going on, but I have. Here's my iPhone. There are four buttons on it. We got a beat, the beat is good. And there's a button on here and it says synth. So as I move the phone around, the synth is playing, it's playing, you know, really amazing melody. And as I move the phone, the, the quality of the sound, the characteristics of the sound will change. Now, what does every old school hip hop song need? It needs a cowbell. You're feeling the beat, right? It's good, yeah. We've also got some drums.
And then you always need a guitar riff in there too. You always find them. We like that. Let's kick it up and out, yeah? You know, frankly, I think that you should come up here now. Oh, yeah. Will you please give this lady a round of applause and yes, force please. her to come up here on stage? But I've already done this whole hip-hop thing. I've done the whole hip-hop thing. I want to give you, I w I want to give you kind of the Barry White R&B, you know? The white R&B? The Barry White R&B. Oh, Barry, Barry White, he has a very low voice. You can imagine in your bedroom, you know, late at night with your, with your partner. You want to kind of get things into the mood, right? So now you're just kind of shaking that thing around. You, you got no, you, no, 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 no. Come on, you got to, this is like an art, this, you got to feel the flow, eh? Easy, all right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You can move the phone up and down. Move it no, you can move it side to side too. And for advance, you can flip the whole thing over and you can stop the beat. Oh, yeah. Who wants? All right, who wants to try the next one? We're gonna do a little bit more upbeat hip hop now. Let's chilly, we gotta wrap up. Are we out of time? One oh, more? Just one more. One demo. more. I've been enough on stage. Anybody wants to do a demo? Now. Before I start picking randomly, somebody had better come up here. Your chance now. Oh, Ready? yeah. A round of applause, everyone, for Big our applause, new please. contestants. Now, did you see how this worked? That's just a little bit of the power of PD. We're doing some th synthesis, we're topping up some beats on the fly. Of course, everything is in real time. Uh, we've set it so that it always plays the right notes so that everyone sounds good. Uh, but this is only, this is the tiniest bit of what a, what a language or what a technology like PD can do. Uh, we can also do crazy sound effects. We can do, we can detect what it is that you're doing with your life. We can look at the accelerometer and do some math on that. Anything that you want. And uh, the sky's the limit, really. So if we've kind of made you guys interested or curious about what this thing is, not only how do you get it onto your, onto your, onto your mobile device or your desktop, but also how do you get it on the web, come up and talk to us afterwards. Thank you very much. Hey, thank you, Martin. Thank you, Yuli. Thank you, Sebastian. I think this was a very funky presentation. The funkiest we had until now, I don't know like how we are going to continue with the other ones, but this was pretty awesome. Uh, please make sure you catch up the guys around here and Yuli will be here on Saturday talking about um, making interactive albums via apps or actually are apps the future format for albums? 
double title. So please be here. Um, yeah, thanks again.